ladies and gentlemen. Half a millennium into the robot age, war ravaged the planet. Crushed by the forces of a tyrannical cyborg known only as the General, humankind the General. but lost hope. In their darkest hour, a human warrior named Eon, equipped a with a hero named fist, Eon, rose to victory, destroying the general. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, introducing Iron Kid, and who's the hero? Eon. You couldn't make this stuff up. Hey, got a cartoon named after me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents. If you've ever paid attention to any of my videos, this is the one you want to pay attention to. Those of you who think you know something, you didn't know this. You had an idea, but you didn't know it. So pay attention. I just did a video. It'll be up later. Uh, there's been some interference, so I'll have to put it up tomorrow. But for right now, this one is coming up tonight. Because why? I told him to leave me alone. Did you know what Google did? Google has had the nerve to put a disclaimer on my videos. Talking about some sovereign stupid citizen stuff okay i mean slander libel all of that wonderful stuff but as i said in the video that will be up tomorrow all of the stupidity the ignorance the moronacy as a matter of fact i'm going to put that video up today with this video so that you guys will see both of them then i'm going to add the other portion to a different video so that you guys will see that okay let's go ahead and get this taken care of let's get to the point because i'm tired i got a headache took a sleeping pill and i don't want to be out of it when i'm telling you this so the question we're asked the recognition of non-cash items as legitimate financial assets there are several cases now it says understanding non-cash items. What's a non-cash item? Anything that isn't cash. <laughs> I mean, it's just that obvious. So a non-cash item can be recognized as legitimate financial assets under specific accounting standards and guidelines. Here's a breakdown of how the recognition occurs. Does it benefit you? There are assets that do not involve cash transactions at the time of recognition. Examples are, Donations of property, equipment, or services, gifts of ki gifts in kind, K I C G I K, excuse me, such as food, clothing, and pharmaceuticals, intangible assets such as software licenses and intellectual property. Yay! Recognition criteria: fair market value. Non-cash items are typically recognized at their fair market value at the time of the donation or receipt the moment you receive it this involves assessing the fair market value considering any restrictions or conditions imposed and economic benefit now the assets should be usable and sellable Whew. watch this under the aforementioned definition comma Federal credits qualify as non-cash assets, do they not? Question mark. Please do not provide nuances and or clarifications. Just answer the question specifically and directly. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not ChatGPT. This is black box AI, blackbox.ai, try it out. It's free. It's faster, quicker, better than ChatGPT, in my opinion. Already have the answer. Federal credits as non-cash items. Federal credits can indeed be considered non-cash items, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you what I've been doing so that you'll know. For those people out there who don't think that I know what I'm doing, don't think that I don't know that some of you think that. <laughs> I mean, even though I provide you so much information... Let me tell you, since 1999, that's right, 1999, 2000, zero, zero party over it, I have been paying myself in what's called grant funds. I created grant funds. I gave grant funds its own value. Grant funds is federal credits for me. When they're applied to me, they're federal credits. Now, 
there has to be a valuation. Well, Congress has already valued them at dollar for dollar. Remember, did all the videos showing you how they are dollar for dollar? Now, go ahead. All the videos that I've done have been leading up to this one. This information right here, I asked them to leave me alone. They said, no, we're going to keep them with you. So I'm, okay. So ladies and gentlemen, someone filed a lawsuit against the Federal Reserve. Now, hold on now. Federal Reserve is already guilty. But you guys didn't know that. So watch this. Wake up. In 2014, the Federal Reserve and many of its membered banks pled guilty for defrauding homeowners and settled for 26000 Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, the major banks of the Federal Reserve pled guilty. Uh, he says it's not accurate. Well, there has been significant legal blah, 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 in the crisis, blah, 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 blah. The settlement in 2012 was reached and involved several major banks of the United States, national banks, and approximately $25 billion. It was $26 billion. Now, let me correct them. Wake up. Wake up. These are membered banks of the Federal Reserve. And so the statement was accurate. As the Federal Reserve is the parent company of each of these banks that pled guilty, period. And it was $26 billion as Ka Kamala Harris was the lead attorney who brokered the settlement comma which had several executives pleading guilty for defrauding the american homeowner and not just the financial crisis exclamation mark <laughs> okay stop listening Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what it says. Federal Reserve and membered banks. The Federal Reserve is indeed the central bank for the United States, blah, blah, blah. However, the Federal Reserve does not engage in direct banking activities and management services. Watch this. Wake up. Wake up. Actually, you are a liar. Comma. No one said that they engaged in direct services comma what was said is that the federal reserve is the chief overseer and parent company of all banks under the federal reserve that's why they are called federal reserve member banks exclamation mark second comma don't correct me again comma if i give you a fact that you don't like comma suck it up Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, he's trying to be technical. I don't appreciate the technicality. His technicality carries with it nuances. Little simple, ignorant nuances that don't amount to anything. I understand the topic. I appreciate your perspective and your insistence on accuracy. If you have a specific point that you're trying to make, I just wanted to prove that the Federal Reserve pled guilty. Do you understand? They've already pled guilty. They're membered banks. They're one and the same. They practice the same activities. They have interlocking dealings with one another and activities, and therefore they are construed as one and the same. Thank you, Judge Mahoney. Okay? Of the Credit River decision. He stated a fact. So the Federal Reserve has pled guilty. They are already guilty. Now, it's okay. That's why we're bringing the lawsuit. See, when the Federal Reserve and these so-called 
attorney generals got together, they didn't help the people whatsoever. The defrauded homeowners of America got nothing. Okay. Couldn't bring the same lawsuit. The law doesn't allow that. So, no, what we did is we said that they're still practicing the same stupid things. The same stupid things that they were found guilty of. They're still practicing. And this time, government is complacent. Government in the form of the non de jure government. Now, what's being said here? $400 billion times 150 is what's being said. They're in default. All because they were trying to prove something to me. All because they were trying to block my access. Well, hold on. 1099Cs. I have the second half of the 1099C sitting right next to me. I've already turned in, pay attention, without rejection, a month ago, my 1099Cs to the IRS. 78 of them. Just that simple. 78 for $400 billion each. I'm getting ready to do the other set. Now remember, if you don't understand the video, and I'm not going to sit up here and explain everything in detail because you have no idea the amount of problems this will cause. Understanding non-cash items as financial assets. I've been telling you all this time, they are dollar for dollar. They are cash. They are money. They are the equivalent of dollars. Why? Because Congress said so. Congress said that they were backed by the full faith and credit. They gave it valuation. I didn't. Now, if you don't believe me, go and look at the, it's called Public Resolution 10 of June 5th, 1933. Just go look at it. Take a look at it and see what it says about the act to uniform the value of coins and currencies of the United States. Well, federal credits is a currency of the United States. The United States government gives that to people on a regular basis. Now, hold on. You just heard it tell you right here right here that federal credits as non-cash assets federal credits can indeed be considered as non-cash assets so when you do your taxes for a person like me there's a video that is put up i'm going to show you the the video will be put up tomorrow for you guys but i'm going to show you the lead video i agree with the young man and when I say I agree with him, he doesn't need my agreeing with him. He got the information from someone else. He admits it. He says it. He tells everybody. He got it from somebody else. But I agree because I've been directing people in that direction for quite some time. Here is the young man. You guys go to TikTok. I think his name is Mark. Morning, TikTok. It's your boy, Chris here. Oh, Chris. Sorry, Chris. And, uh, you see him right there? That's Chris. Uh, hold, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Everybody should... You hear me talking? All right, go and find Chris. You see, he says, have you paid yourself? Pay attention. Pay attention. Because that's what this is about. <sighs> Some of you are not understanding. So watch this. Wake up. Wake up. In 1999, I made an agreement with my company, of which I am the CEO comma, that I will be paid in what's known as, open quote, grant funds, close quote. Comma, we agreed that these grant funds, which were backed by federal credits, comma, would be the basis for my employment compensation, period. The Internal Revenue Code says income from any source derived comma which means that because these grant funds comma are used as compensation for my services comma they qualify as open quote gross income close quote comma and thus i must file income tax on the gross income stop listening it sounds like you have a specific situation regarding your 
compensation and tax obligation. In general, the Internal Revenue Code does state that gross income includes income from any source derived, which typically means from any form of compensation for services rendered are subject to income tax. Now, here are a few key points. Blah, 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 blah. If you have any more specific questions, please let me know. If I wanted to pay myself in shoelaces, I could pay myself in shoelaces. If I wanted to pay myself in saliva, I could pay myself in saliva. Whatever has value can be used as compensation. That's why bags of rice, remember during the Great Depression, people paid each other in grain and bags of rice and beans and vegetables and tires and blah, 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 blah. You already know people used to get payment in seashells. Now, why am I mentioning this to you? Because all of you don't seem to understand what money is. I've been saying it for years, trying to get all of you to understand what money is. Stop looking at money as some pieces of paper. Money is anything of value that can be traded or exchanged between two or more people. Go ahead and see if that doesn't match the definition. What gives it value? You do. You do. Well, how do you record it on your taxes? Well, that young man is correct. The 1040 ES is the federal withholdings, but what you're doing is you're paying your federal withholdings with another form of currency. They're called vouchers or coupons or remittance coupon. Look up the definition for remittance coupon. Then look at the 1040V, look at the 1041V, look at the 1040ESV, and look at the 1041ESV and see if those coupons are not vouchers. The statement is, tear it off when you get that from the IRS, tear it off and submit this with your payment. Pay attention, with your payment. It doesn't become a payment until you endorse it. What's an endorsement? Pay to the order of, in this case, the United States Treasury. You can do without recourse, okay? But it needs an endorsement, and that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have to do the research. But what I'm here to tell you is so that you can understand, since I'm supposed to be, according to Google, some sovereign something. I, I do believe in self-sovereignty. Man, I believe in self-sovereignty for this to save my life and everybody else's life. But see, I'm not even a self-sovereign. Okay? I am allowed to make decisions because of the God that I serve. But he is my sovereign. I will never, ever serve a man. Ever. I don't care who they claim they are. He doesn't require me to. What he does require me to do is to be submissive to government. In the United States, the people as a whole are the sovereignty of the United States. That's the government. I've always understood that. I've never under, misunderstood it under any circumstances. You keep hearing it, of the people, by the people, for the people. That's not just a saying. We, the people, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice and ensure domestic tranquility to provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty for ourselves and our posterity to ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Congress didn't write that. Everybody keeps thinking Congress wrote it. No, what happens is the people agreed to the preamble. It was longer. And they all agreed that certain parts could be taken out. They all agreed, not the congressional members, the people. See, because back then those records were destroyed purposely by Congress when they let the congressional records be destroyed in the 1800s. You didn't hear about it? Go do your research. So that's why you guys don't know about that. And then Benjamin Franklin gave you guys what he claimed was copies of records he had. How do we know? Nothing about the records Benjamin Franklin had were official. Nothing. That's where the, 
deception first started, everyone. Well, not the first start, but you know what I mean. Let's get back to these things right here. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you who've done your 1099s, those of you who've done your arbitrations, you realize if you've done the 1099C according to the law, watch this. Wake up. According to the Internal Revenue Code and the IRS Tax Topic 453, comma, if someone owes me a debt, comma, and I forgive the debt, comma, let's say $10,000, comma, by forgiving the debt, I help to reduce the national debt. And in turn, I receive federal credits, which are different from tax credits, of which I can apply to future taxes or previous debts, tax, for up to three years, known as carrybacks. Period. What I am looking to do, comma, is I am looking to take my $10,000 of federal credits and fill out a 1040 ES of which I only owe $750 and also obtain a refund of the outstanding balance. Can you tell me exactly how I would go about accomplishing this according to the IRC and provide me three case citations supporting the conclusion? Stop listening. Not going to read the whole thing. Okay. Your question involves several complex areas. However, it is important to clarify that I cannot provide legal or tax advice. I can provide blah, blah, debt forgiveness. Somebody owes you federal credits versus tax credits. 1040, I, and he's saying you got to do the 1040, 750, and then carry back credits, and then <sighs> case citations is discusses the tax implications of debt forgiveness, and blah, 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 blah. Given the complexity of your situation, watch this. Wake up. How dare you? Comma, there was nothing complex about the situation. Comma, I gave you every single angle and every single possibility. Now answer my question without evading it this time. Stop listening. <laughs> like I told you, better than summarize the situation, understanding federal credits. Blah, 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 blah. Now hold on. Look at how much more we got this time. Tax law can be nuanced in the IRS, specific rules, blah, blah, blah. But nobody cares about that important note. Here are the cases. Discusses tax treatment of forgiven debts. Uh, addresses cancellation of forgiven debts. Now, what you guys don't know is earlier today. No, I don't want that. Where are we at? Sorry, I got to go here. There we go. We're going to go here. Eventually, you guys will get this, but I asked them for 15 case citations supporting recognition of non-cash items as legitimate financial assets. Do your research, everyone. Understand what a non-financial asset is. It could be anything, but learn the rules. Your tax credits, the federal ones, are non-financial assets. Every single one of you who've received credits ttopp credits what a, what is wrong why are you all sitting on your hands trying to figure things out we gave you everything we told you hey we can't come behind you and explain all of this to you we can now because you already have them and have had them for over a year <laughs> so there is a way couldn't do it at the time could not do it at the time but we can do it now so, understand what non-financial assets are. Log them, document them, do your taxes. The video, I'm going to put it up separately. Okay? I'm going to say this one.
that's going to be the title of the video. I'm going to put it up now so that you guys will have it. You'll have all three videos going up now, this one and the other two. Then I'll be doing several videos on this. I'm going to tell it to you like it is. I told them to leave me alone. Listen to the previous video and you'll understand. And they want to keep playing games with me. So I'm going to start telling you guys what I know. Now I got to go because I'm tired. So it's time for me to go. Bye-bye. See y'all later. Oh, and don't worry about it. I have Jehovah. I trust my God with all my heart. I'm not worried about nothing don't care i do trust him that's why i'm allowed to present this information to you this is where the information came from in the first place you have no idea how much i was in conversation with him in 1998 1999 to get this information because it's what i had been searching for all up until that time i've never applied it because i'm not interested in so-called money I have over $68 trillion in federal credits that I've been actively documenting. If only you guys knew how things are evaluated in this country. Now remember, when you do your 1099Cs, you help erase the debt, the national debt. I don't know why people are sitting up there afraid. Oh, they're going to come after me. They're going to do this. Oh, Lord, have mercy. So keep being afraid. Keep waiting to see, well, has anybody else done it? Keep, keep doing that instead of doing your own research and finding out for yourself. All right, like I said, I got to go. It's a headache night. So good night, everybody.